Let's say it's Friday morning and you're looking forward to a nice relaxing end of the week, but then you open your email inbox and see that you have a new email from your client and it's a long list of website feedback that you have to work through. Now this is fine. Working through feedback is an important part of the website development process, but working through a list like this is not a convenient way to approach feedback. So today I'm going to show you two ways that you can get feedback from your client to make the process faster and easier so that you can spend more time beating your high score on 3D Tetris. So let's jump right in. First, let's rewind and look at the email we sent to our client. We told them that the first version of the website was ready for feedback, and then we sent them a link straight to the staging site. That's it. And by doing this, we're essentially asking them to send us a long wall of feedback through email that we then have to sift through. So instead, we can either use markup or Notion to get feedback from our client in a format that's going to be much easier to work through. Let's start with markup. If we go to markup.io, we can add our staging site so that our client can browse the website and leave feedback in line as they go through each page. So once we've logged in, we can add the URL to the staging site, or if we're still in the design stage, we can instead export our design and import it as a PDF into markup to get feedback on the design. But let's start with our staging website for now. Now we can add our client to the project either by adding in their email or by copying and sending the link to them through email. And once they've got the link, they can jump into the project and now they can leave any kind of feedback that you would expect, such as updating text, changing an image out, any alignment or scaling issues, or if you could somehow make the logo pop just a little bit more. All they need to do is click on a section and then they can add their comment in line. If we then switch from comment to browse, we can easily move through the website to find any bugs on different pages. And we can also change from desktop to tablet and mobile views too. Now that they've left all their feedback inline on the website, when we click a piece of feedback, it's going to take us straight to the section that the feedback is for. Compare that to getting feedback through email, where you have to decipher each comment and figure out which page and section the feedback is for. So now I can go through and resolve each piece of feedback as I update it in Webflow, or if I need more info from my client, I can simply add a reply and it will email them to let them know that I need more information from them. So that's markup, a much easier way for your clients to browse and leave feedback throughout the website. But we have one more option that we can use. If you're already using Notion as the hub for your website projects, but you might instead prefer to use a Kanban board to work through feedback with your client. You can simply create a new board, add a couple of groups such as not started to review and completed, and then add your clients to the page or send them a link in the same way that you would with markup. If you prefer to work this way, let your clients know that they can take a screenshot of the section that the feedback is for and then add it to the card along with the name of the feedback and any other information that might be helpful. As you work through the feedback cards, you can move them to the review board so that your clients can ensure that they look good before moving them to be completed. So whether we use markup or notion, we have a much better system for both working through feedback and keeping track of all the feedback that we've worked through in one place, which means no more sifting through old emails to try and remember what piece of feedback our client is referring to. A quick final aside, if you're early in the design process of a new website and you're worried about your clients leaving you way too much feedback, you might want to first go through the website with them on a call and talk through your design decisions. And in this way, they will have the right context and will be a lot less likely to nitpick details for you to update. So that's all I have on feedback. So let me know if you found this helpful or interesting or any other thoughts you have in the comments below. Or if you have any recommendations for future videos, feel free to pop those in the comments too. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Leave a like or subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you on the next one.